Hey folks, my name is Evan with Zeal Woodworking. Thank you for tuning in to check out the video. I appreciate your time. This is Japanese table build part 2. So in this video we're going to focus on cutting the tenons into the stretchers that will fit into the legs and making the supports that will attach the stretchers that the table will then rest on. So we'll get going and thank you for your time. See ya. All right, and the next thing is to cut the tenons out of the stretchers that will fit into the mortises of the legs. So I've just used my table saw and a dado stack with this incremiter gauge to cut out the material. You can see that I've cut a 45 degree miter in the end of the stretcher here. I mentioned in the first video, but the mortises and the legs are going to be kind of close together. So when the stretchers come in, those tenons fit in. There wasn't going to be much room for them, so I'm cutting this miter in the tenon so that they'll, they'll fit in together better. I wasn't sure whether I should cut the tenon first and have it over long and then cut it to size with the miter, or if I should do the miter first and then make it into a tenon. I ended up doing that, the second option, but I think it was a mistake. I know it was a mistake. The way the math worked out, because I cut the, the miter first and then I removed material, instead of doing vice versa, I ended up losing some of the length of the tenon. So it wasn't as long as I wanted it to be. So when they actually fit together in the legs, or they didn't meet completely. There was a bit of a gap. So uh, this is just a learning experience in the future. Rather, cut the tenon first, have it you know longer than you need, and then cut it down to size, uh, making that 45 degree miter. Um, and, you know, so the first part is I just kind of I use this one, two, three stop block that I've got clamped up against my fence, and I can just butt the stretcher up against it and then make the cut. And that way it's very consistent. But after I've done that, you, you know, because we lose that material, I can't butt it up against the stop block anymore because it won't be the same length. It'll be off. So just kind of uh, moved it up until it barely made contact with the blade. And then was just able to tap it over and ease it in until I got the, the mark, the cut line I wanted. So the next step is to clean up the tenons and, and get a really precise fit. You know, the uh, dado stack leaves these kind of rough saw blade marks in it. And to get them a really nice fit in the mortise, I normally cut them a little bit oversized, just like a 32nd of an inch, you know, too wide or, or too thick, that I can then kind of clean up with this router plane and get it so it'll really fit exactly in that mortise. And this is, you know, the perfect tool for that. You can really do these fine depth to judge adjustments on how much material to remove. And you can really kind of dial in your fit so it, it fits, you know, real snugly into that mortise. So my lovely assistant here is my dad, and he is great. He is such a big help to me. He's always got really great ideas that are creative, and he popped in here just to give me a hand, getting everything glued up together. You know, just using some, some parallel clamps, and. Um, you can see I've, I've got this green painter's tape around the joint and that's just so any extra glue that squeezes out lands on the tape instead on the wood itself. That way cleanup's easier because I can just remove the tape and the glue will, will come with it instead of trying to get into like a really sharp angle to you know clean out any extra glue it'll just be a lot easier this way. 
I'm using this cut off from the you know, scraps from the tabletop to make these supports that will rest on the stretchers and this is what the tabletop will actually rest on. So I made this little template out of some MDF and that way when I make them all they're hopefully you know, all very consistent and looking the same. Uh, you know, I'm drawing them out so that I can cut them out of the bandsaw. The one I've drawn on the very left actually didn't work because the grain didn't match. You know, the two on the right, the back side of what you'll see is um, you know, edge grain, whereas the one on the far left is end grain, so they look different. So I end up not using the one on the left. So after using the template to sketch out these supports, you went to the bandsaw and cut them out roughly. You know, so being careful not to go too close to the line, knowing that it's fine if it's rough because then I can take it to this oscillating belt sander to clean it up. And this thing is great. You know, it's it's pretty powerful and you know relatively precise. You know, so you can work it and very gradually kind of sand it down it meets your line and you can be very flush with the line that you've drawn and there's less risk of going over the line past it and messing up the shape you're going for and this thing's great because it's got these two kind of curved ends one has got a larger radius for doing kind of gradual wider circles like this one and the other end is tighter it's a smaller radius so you can do very you know tighter curves and then it has this flat surface that you know you can rest it on the the, the uh, worktop and push it up against this flat surface and get a very square edge and uh, so that's what I'm doing here and it's just a great tool to you know get things sanded down to exactly the line that you're going for and the next step is to go over to the drill press and pre-drill some holes so the way these supports will work I'll show you in a minute but they kind of hook on to the top of the stretcher and then I'll sink some screws through the support into the stretcher to hold them in place. So I'm just pre-drilling the holes so there's less chance of the, the wood cracking or splitting when the screw goes in. I wish I'd taken more time to lay out these screw holes. They, they're not very uniform, they're not in line and I wish I'd taken the time to do that. But oh well. So after I've drilled the holes through then I'm going to use this half inch Forstner bit to cut the plug holes. And so they will just basically just be a, a larger hole at the beginning of these screw holes that the plug will go into and hide the screw inside of it. So because there's going to be a screw underneath this, I, I can't have the plug hole go all the way through. So I use the depth stop just so it only goes in about half an inch. And that way I can sink the screw through the big hole into the smaller screw hole and into the stretcher and then put the plug in behind it in the big hole to hide the screw. And this is cutting the plugs that will go in those holes. So to try and match the plugs with the support as best I can so they're hopefully blended, not very visible, I'm using a scrap piece of wood from the support. So hopefully it'll, the grain will match the best I can. And as you can see, I'm kind of struggling. My plug cutter, there's so much friction, it keeps binding and getting stuck. So if anybody knows a trick to reduce that friction or if there's a better plug cutter out there you'd recommend, just let me know because that'd be a big help. And so, you know, take the plug cutter, don't plunge all the way through, but go most of the way. And then I just feed, feed it through the bandsaw to cut off that just the back portion of this block of wood. And I always kind of enjoy it because as you feed it through, the bandsaw severs the back of the plugs from the rest of the wood. And then they kind of come loose, they pop free. And I always kind of like that. So the way these supports are made, they have this, you know, 90 degree kind of L cut into them. 
And those are great because it just fits right onto these stretchers. And, you know, I try to cut them so that they all fit. They were the same width and the same height, so it really fit together well. And I measured ahead of time where I wanted each of the supports to go. So each one was in the same distance over from each leg as the other, so they looked very uniform. You know, put some glue on the inside of that L, you know, so give a little extra holding power, and then sunk some screws through those holes into the stretchers. Added a, a clamp just to help get everything really, you know, clamped together well, and, and that was it. So hopefully you could see, but when I was putting those plugs in, you know, the plugs, because they're, they're face grain, you know, as opposed to end grain like dowels would be when you, if you buy a dowel, these plugs are face grain, and so they have, you know, grain, they have like lines in them. And so when you put the plugs in, you can kind of rotate them so that the, the grain in the plugs matches the grain in the workpiece, you know, as closely as you can. So hopefully they're they blend a bit more, not quite as visible. And after it's dry, just kind of cut in using this flush trim saw to cut them off. And try not to cut too close to the wood so you don't like dig the saw blade and gouge the wood. But I am guilty of that. Um, but yeah, so cut the, the, the plugs off and then use this sander and sand everything down. Try not to sand just in the one spot, but spread it over the whole surface so you don't you know sand a gouge or a low spot into it and it kind of cleans up nicely and obviously you can still see the plugs it's not invisible but I think if anything it's kind of like a nice decorative touch hey folks okay last break I don't think this video is too long so we'll cut it here and then I'll we'll do a third and final video in a week or two the third video will cover making the bow ties that will go in the tabletop um, applying the, the finish and putting everything together and that'll be a wrap. So thank you for your time and uh, appreciate it. Bye.